All right, and we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Money Monday. Today, we're going to be talking about index funds and ETFs. Let's get into it, baby. Let's go. Right. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast. It is Monday, aka Money Monday, guys, and we are going to be talking today about index funds and ETFs. Before we get into that, quick announcements. Okay, so patreon.com slash fresh fit, guys. Go ahead and get all the behind the scenes content there, whether it's me kicking out annoying girls, uh, making money, getting girls, getting in shape, fitness, uh, what else? Credit scores, real estate, womanizing in general. Just Every, get getting your money up, guys. Everything, Zoom calls. Check us out, patreon.com slash fresh fit, guys. Go support us over there. Also, merch. Freshfitpodcaststore.com. You get the hoodies, t-shirts, all the merch is there. Freshfitpodcaststore.com. So you guys can see, I got the hoodie on right now with the, you know, the Fresh Fit logo on the back. I got better hoodie designs this time, like better quality. And then also on the back, we got the Sims to Pimps. But I do have a version also that does not have the Sims to Pimps for you guys. So uh, check me out over there and you can see my big bald spot as well, man. Uh, <laughs> I need a haircut. Um, and then also, guys, <clears throat> check us out on Spotify, Google and Out Podcast. Every single platform you guys listen to podcasts, we are there. Just make sure you wear headphones so you don't get in trouble. It's amazing to me how many guys have gotten in trouble for listening to our podcast, bro. Well, like, to your voice, not to podcasts. It, yeah, they hear it. Like, I heard like, Mar's voice in the background fire. Right. Which is the podcast. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Stupid. Okay. Yeah, but so if, if your voice is like, you know, hey, what's up, guys? Fired. Well, the, reason, the reason why is because they can actually understand me when I speak. That's facts. But, but when they listen to the podcast and they hear you, they're like, oh, what the hell? Hey, bro, 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 bro. hey well, pretty much. Yeah. Shit. Hey, that's funny, but... uh. I can, I can also relate. <laughs> uh, so yeah, check us out over there, guys. Uh, we have the anchor link below. It'll because we we pretty much on every pod, uh, platform, whether it's Google, Apple, Spotify, we're there. Okay, we're everywhere. P hub. Uh, that's you, nigga. Not us. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, guys, check us out on our other YouTube channel, Fresh and Fit Clips, guys. Um, that channel is doing really well. We post two clips on there per day. You might not have time to watch the full on podcast, which is totally cool. Even though we put timestamps in it and make your life really easy, but if you don't want to watch the entire pod, you can go ahead and check out our Fresh and, Fit Clips, Fresh and Fit Clips channel where we actually go ahead and post two clips per day, somewhere between three to ten minutes. And, uh, yeah, best parts of the show. Check us out over there. Also, your attention span is even shorter. We have a Fresh and Fit Shorts, okay? For all the people out there that don't want to watch anything over a minute long, we have a whole Shorts channel as well, guys. Check it out. We're going to be posting on there almost exclusively with the Shorts. I think we're pretty much done posting it on their main channel. Yeah. Um, so you got to go to the Shorts channel, check out the Shorts. And then uh, Fresh has a vlog channel as well. So, guys, for behind the scenes, check out the vlog channel. We did a yacht party yesterday. It was pretty dope. Um, however, we got stuck on the yacht for two hours. <laughs> Bro. Doing nothing. So uh, I was pulling the was chain cool. for about, uh, yeah. <laughs> about an so hour. Imagine this, right? We're on the water. It's lit. We're having a great time. Yeah. All of a sudden, we, we docked next to Mike Hevel's boat. Uh, we'd link up with them a little bit. And then we're getting, we're getting ready to leave. We're like, okay, let's leave. All of a sudden, it's, ur, ur, ur. We, we can't leave. The anchor is stuck. So... Chris and uh, the other fresh started helping out with the with the chain, but like with the anchor, man, two hours of that, bro. Wait, let, why does fresh never help with anything, bro? Bro, fresh was in there. Bro, I was recording the whole time. I'm like, yo, fresh, what are you doing? Bro. He was, he was and vlogging. Let's real here. Someone work need, needed to be done in the bedroom downstairs, you know. So yeah, that's all I'm saying. Anyhow, um, <laughs> but yeah, we're smashing though, and we still want to save us. It was a great <laughs> trip, man. You know, uh, shout out to everyone, the captain as well. It's like useless, bro. Save that, bro. <laughs> like, yo, listen, who's gonna report, report the news? Only me, bro. I gotta report the news. Bro. <laughs> bro, 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 report the news. Uh, like, come on, man. You had these guys. You got Chris and Fresh and the other Fresh Pull that chain, bro. Listen, I invited them on the boat, and look, they were useful. Nigga, I invited girls on the boat. Damn, bro. The fuck. <laughs> Sky fresh, bro. <laughs> oh man. Oh, man. Anyways, team work. See what happened on, on on the um. I mean, yacht. Chris, you needed to work out anyway, bro. But damn, like uh. <sighs> yeah, I mean. See, that's, why I, that's why I ain't going on the boat with y'all, bro. Just why? Because <laughs> I already know if I was there, I would have been there by myself pulling that goddamn chain out. And if you admire in his true form, check out the vlog channel as well because we got videos of you doing what? Being yourself. 
in public, which is hilarious. So check out the blog channel, 100 Kind of Way. Okay. Music gang, let's go. If I do go outside, that is. Nowadays, I'm, I'm very uh, secluded. I just sit in here all day by myself and cry myself to sleep and oh, look at, yeah. By what? yourself? Are we, are we friends? Shut up. <laughs> all right. I will say I'll tell you this, though. I want to be smashed on no goddamn bowl while these guys are trying to pull an anchor out, bro. <laughs> Allegedly, who, who said it was me? It yeah. could have been somebody else. Allegedly. You know? Man. Yeah, it's money And I, I'm sure the chat already knows who it is, probably. Listen, man, I'm a man of God. How, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> he did not help out with pulling the anchor because he was dealing with a girl from Anchorage, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, am I right? Listen, man. Am I right or am I right? I'm moving along smartly. You got to like that one. You don't even know where Anchorage is, probably. It's, it's in cheese. Alaska. Isn't it cheese? No, it's in Alaska. Oh, I, I, I knew that. Yeah. <sighs> Stupid. Speaking of Alaska. Uh, uh... Oh, yeah, speaking of Alaska. Hey, guys, check out my other YouTube channel. It's called Fed 1811, guys. I did the Boston Marathon bombing case yesterday, man. It was three plus hours long. It was lit, though. Uh, I, guys, I went from everything from the beginning to like where the bombers were from in Chechnya, all the way to how the FBI invest uh, found uh, um, identified them. The chase in Watertown, the sh the shootout that they got in, the carjacking with the guy. Pretty much everything that was in the movie, The Patriot. Basically, I went through it. And um, or Patriot. I think it was Patriots Day. Was the movie with Mark Wahlberg? Mm. But uh, I went through it, guys, and I gave you guys and. Also, I debunked some myths as well as far as, like, you know, what happened during the case. Because just so you guys know, I lived in Boston at the time uh, that happened. And uh, I was actually writing a fight. Yo, you want to know something crazy? So real fast, right? So, and everyone thought this was wild. So when the Boston Marathon bombing happened on that Monday, I, 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 was, at I was a senior at Northeast University, right, guys? And I was doing my final paper because uh, I majored in criminal justice. And I was doing a paper on terrorism in the United States, right? And in the paper, I had written that... There has not been a successful terrorist attack in the United States since 9 11. Damn. Kid you not? Finish writing that paragraph, right? And I go and I had my phone, everything turned off. I had the news off because I had to like finish and get this paper done because it was due in a couple of days. Uh, I, I turned my phone on and I get like a million missed calls, right? And I was an intern for, for Homeland Security at the time, right? I had just, I'd been an intern for about three years, right? And I was about to graduate. And my supervisor had called me a bunch of times. He sent me a text message, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I was like, what the fuck? So I call him and I say, hey, what's up? What, is everything okay? And he was like, yo, a bomb went off uh, on, on Boylston. And for some of you guys that don't know, Boylston Street is uh, the street where the finish line is for the Boston Marathon, right? It, the finish line is right in front of a store called Marathon Sports. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, a, a bomb just went off. Uh, we're going to go respond. I was like, he's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm writing a paper. He's like, all right, don't, don't leave your dorm. Like, don't leave the area. And... Yo, I had to go back and delete that paragraph, bro, because I was like, God damn, there was the, 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 the fucking literally the day I was trying to get this paper done. I had written, there has never been a successful uh, terrorist attack on U.S. soil since 9-11. And then, bam, these guys fucking the Sarnav brothers <laughs> fucked that up. So I had to rewrite the whole paper, bro. I'll say this. You did an in-depth breakdown. Because when I went on my YouTube at like 12 a.m., you were still on? Nigga, how long was what's the stream? Like three hours and 20 minutes? Yeah, it was like three and a half hours. But I broke it down from everything, bro, because like there was a lot that like I had to go over, man. I had to go because uh, for one, because the city was on lockdown while these, these guys were running around for multiple days. They didn't find them right after the explosion. Man, that's a lot of research. Yeah. You did it all by yourself or you had somebody helping you? Did it by myself, <laughs> motherfucker. Yo, turn the camera, Chris. <laughs> Yo, turn the camera, Chris. This, guy, this guy is. Hey, this guy, hey. You need help with that, huh? Yeah, I did it myself. Welcome. She was just helping me out with uh, her talents. <laughs> with her talents. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. Welcome back to my. Yeah, yeah shout, shout out to Amanda <laughs> in the back. Uh, but yeah, man. Anyway. <laughs> Sheesh. Okay, super chats. All right, well, I'll hit these chats real quick and then we'll get into the, into the show. Funds in the ETFs. Hey, guys, do me a favor. Like the video, man. And uh, yeah, but no, it was, it was one of my favorite streams and people really enjoyed it. Of course um, it is. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about it on the uh, after hour show. But but this one, we got to make it high and tight. So let's read these chats real fast. Yep. Uh, Albo Ace, five bucks. Fresh can be careful with that live chick. I guess Psycho Vice from her. She looked at you crazy when you told her she don't live here during your last live. Listen, man, she's a cool person. Relax, bro. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Big Al, five bucks. Tip about index funds. Do it in a Roth IRA and not an individual account. Index funds are meant for retirement and not short-term profit. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about that here. Uh, che Wendell uh, became a YouTube member. Hey, welcome, welcome to the Fresh Remember. Fan, my friend. Uh, you. Mr. Beef Snorkel, $10. At first, it stings when someone on the level of Walter or Myron won't even respond to you because you're not worth the time. Thank you for inspiring me. You'll know who I am one day soon. First round on me. Bro, we're busy, what? man. Bro. Yeah. What? My mom, you're going to get a response from me. 
<laughs> Nigga, I don't even know who you are, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna respond to you every single time. <laughs> yeah, and I, I try. Yeah. I actually try, but it's just too much, bro. Well, hey, man, Mr. Beef Snorkel. Uh, it's not like we mean to, you know, ignore you, bro. I just we might have just not seen your DM, bro. Yo, I don't, guys. Fresh. Well, I I get easily a hundred DMs a day. Mm. You probably get oh, a couple hundred because yeah. you got like hundred K followers. I get a lot. Plus, too you much. know. Guys, yeah, I'll, I'll get well over 100 DMs a day, man. So I, I we can't respond to everybody. And 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 the Fresh Affair account, we don't even manage that. Yeah, we, we have access to it, but we don't we don't run that account, bro. We, our buddy runs that shit. So anyway, uh, try I Vision. I've been seeing our boy though, Try Vision. He been tagging us a story. Shout out to you, bro. Hey, shout out to you, man. You good, good shape as well. Super Saiyan God Myron. Super Saiyan God Fresh. Super Saiyan God Chris. It's Super Saiyan God Mo. Okay. No E. No E. Oh no E. Well, it's more like Super Saiyan. No. I don't know. Bagel mo or something. Uh, <laughs> La, La Li Lu Li Lo, twenty bucks. twenty bucks. What platform do you use for trading stocks? I'll tell you guys that as uh, as well. Um, this is I'm I'm going to talk about stocks a little bit, guys, but this is mostly index funds and ETFs, and I'm going to break down what they all are. Sovereign Renaissance. Have you guys heard what the IRS is supposed to be doing? Do you have any suggestions to bypass and po- possible future bail INS on personal bank accounts? Oh, bail insurance. Um. So I th- I think if I'm correct, they're gonna actually. I don't know if it's some, something with your bank accounts they could like put insurance on it and like take from your account. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. Well, yeah, they'll take your money if you don't pay your taxes. That's a fact. Yeah, but let's be real here. Most people don't pay all their taxes. As in, like, I'd argue more people probably pay overpaying their taxes because they don't understand like tax laws and because mo- most people get destroyed on their earned income. Oh yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? I began like letters in the I- 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 IRS. I'm like, damn. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot, though. Not a lot, though. Like, 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 like 20 bucks. And I, d- I just pay it. Oh, they sent you a letter for $20? Yes, bro. Yo, Uncle Sam, no, don't fuck no, around, no, bro. Don't play, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what snipes? <laughs> Hell no, bro. <laughs> oh, Steve. Uh, Tevin, Tevin Ramsey, uh, 10 bucks. Love the show. I'm down in Miami for the week for spring break. Fellas, if your girl is down here, she's for the streets right now. I kid you not. Me and my boys are finessing three to four women a day. This is like heaven. All right. I'm good stuff, bro. bro. Niggas think Miami's sweet, bro. If your girl's here, bro, sorry to say, bro. Uh, Mark, th- yeah. Uh, Mark, thanks for the heads up on the Vanguard ETF. Vu, I purchased fifty eight hundred worth of shares at uh, three eighty eight a share. What did you get in at? Are you well? <laughs> Thank you, man. And then Jose Romero, five bucks. Have you ever considered getting Dr. Warren Farrell on the show or anyone from the Red Pill documentary like Cassie, uh, J, Paul Elam, Karen Strawn? No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't thought about any of them. We got Rolo, bro. That's all we need. Actually, matter of fact, Rolo comes in tomorrow. There you go. Uh, and then we got uh, money, money madness, two bucks. I hate sleeping. I stay up late a lot. Is that bad, bro? I ain't all out of you, man. I, I stay up late too. I'm not gonna lie. Get your sleep, man. Uh, Fresh is BBC five bucks. While me and the big homie was doing our thing in Alaska, boss man Myron was going crazy in uh, Simcaria. One story short, <laughs> Snow Bunny's winning. Uh, Kevin, ten dollars. Myron, can you do a vid on Edward Snowden? Uh, counterterrorism cases are where it's at, and yesterday's show was my favorite so far. Keep it up. Okay, so um, Snowden. Um, I will definitely. I was actually researching the Snowden case a couple of days ago, guys. Um, I will do it, but here's a problem: he hasn't been arrested. <laughs> That's true. So everything is still sealed, guys. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not gonna um, unseal the indictment and the criminal complaint until he's under arrest. So that's what kind of sucks about the Snowden thing, because because right now he's he's in Russia, man, hiding out, and he's probably never gonna come to the United States. Well, Russia. But yeah, if he comes back to the United States, he's probably gonna get the death penalty, treason at the highest level. Um, and what else? There's something else. Oh, and since you guys like those counterterrorism cases, I will do probably next week. I'll do another counterterrorism case for you guys. I didn't realize you guys like those cases so much. Um, Amanda Silver Sable Gaines. Fuck you. Happy to be back. Change my name for the trolls. Okay. <laughs> Michael Me Stroke. I love Chris. I know. Pause. Wait, what? Pause. Myron, how was the doll yams? <laughs> okay, man. Oh, Papa shit. Gold. WP 20 bucks. What's the difference between ETFs and mutual funds? Got we'll you right now. Out. We're literally gonna break that down here in a second. And then Uncle Luke, 1980s, FNF, best ever to ever do it. By the way, I'm in Orlando, Florida right now. Got to be back, go back to NY, unfortunately, tomorrow. But I will return to Miami when you have that one million party. Shout Thanks out so to much, Uncle man. Luke. All right. Yeah. Cut Let's up. go. Yep. Cool. All right, guys. So today we're going to cover index funds and ETFs. So let's start with round one right now. Round one. Fight. All right. What are mutual funds, guys? Well, number one, mutual funds are the oldest of the three. We're going to compare uh, mutual funds, index funds, and then ETFs, a.k.a. exchange-traded funds, right? So mutual funds are the first that we're going to discuss, and they are the oldest, all right? They basically were created to allow people to pool money and invest together, 
right? Yeah, it's a, it's a safer bet. It's just exactly you're yeah. diver, you're uh, diversifying the risk a bit. Um, the good is it's convenient, right? So you basically own several stocks commingled in one package, and you can just make one purchase and own a bunch of different companies in one shot, right? Uh, the other positive is that is diversified, so it lessens the risk because you have your risk spread across multiple companies versus having all your eggs in one basket, literally. Okay. Yep. And it's a pool of other people's money as well, so yeah, you have a great chance of benefiting than just your money as well. Exactly. Yep. Um, and then the third part is you get well, this is a gift and a curse. It's a good and a bad. Yeah. You get professional management, guys. And what I mean by professional management is it's actively being monitored and managed. Okay. But since it's being actively monitored and managed by some kind of financial professionals to some degree, um, they're going to charge you a fee, a maintenance fee, which goes somewhere between half a percent to two and a half percent uh, per year. And that can easily start to eat into your uh, your profits, guys, especially when you're, you know, you got a million dollars in there. Plus, that could be quite a bit of money. Um, and here's the other thing, too. Whether you're plus or negative, they're going to get their money. They don't care. OK, so it doesn't matter if they fuck, you, fuck your shit up and. Yeah, uh, they, they you lose money or they make you help get some gains. It regardless, they're gonna get their fee annually. Okay. Um, and then let's see here. There was another note I took here. Guys, I took a lot of notes on this, by the way. For well, you can't see the, the lighting, but uh I took a lot of notes on this. And then let's see here. Yeah, and honestly, personally, I mean, this is just again, this isn't financial advice, guys. We're just kind of giving you guys the one-on-ones here. I wouldn't do mutual funds unless you have a lot of money. The best mutual funds, um, you know, with the best mutual fund, um, uh, uh, managers, you need a lot of money to be able to get in, bro. Like the top, like 1% of people invest with mutual funds, but that guy, they're really good. Another thing too, is that, uh, most of these mutual fund managers can't beat like regular index funds, guys. They just can't like, they lose about nine, like the, um, index funds make more money like 90% of the time. So you're better off with just going with an index or ETF, which we're going to break down here too. But mutual funds are still good. It's old school shit. And you're putting your money with someone to be actively managed. But the problem with that is higher fees. It's a human, ma so you're prone to human error because he's actively managing it. And then on top of that, are you going to beat an index, index fund a lot of time? No. And if you do find someone that could beat an index fund consistently, more than likely, you're going to need millions upon millions of dollars to invest. Okay? So this is not the the way to go for 90, 99% of you guys unless, like, you're a fucking Warren Buffett or whatever. All right? And it should be money that you don't need right now anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so those are the pluses and negatives of a mutual fund. Now, right? Uh, in the 1970s, they created something called the index funds, guys. And this actually kind of came from frustration because mutual funds are so inconsistent because it is very difficult to time the market, watch the market, you know, buy here, buy there, whatever it is. You know, human beings are human beings. They're prone to emotion. They're prone to impulse buying, whatever it may be. So when you uh, when you have someone managing your account for you, they could fuck up, man. And, and you still got to pay them. So people are like, you know what? Screw this. Let's go ahead and create the index fund, which, uh, you know, to make it nice and simple, it basically tracks an index, right? And it's like, uh, think of it as like an algorithm. It's like, hey, we we see the trend here. We're just going to automatically invest at a certain level and we're going to track successful um, indexes. So for example, you know, you could track the S&P 500 or the total stock market, whatever it may be. And this is a much safer bet, okay? So uh, let's see here. Um, and, and the fees are a lot cheaper. So for example, like Vanguard only charges, you know, 0.04% uh, fee, which is, Way less than having someone actively manage your joint, which could be from 0.5% to all the way 2.5%, right? Um, so that's better. And then also, uh, the only thing that sucks, right? With um, But the thing, so there's a plus and a negative, right? So you have lower fees, but with some index funds, and we're gonna, I'm actually going to show you guys a couple different index funds from different uh, brokers, mm -hmm. right? You might need money to invest in the beginning. So I know, for example, Vanguard, which I have Vanguard myself, guys, right? And I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. But uh, you need three thousand dollars to invest uh, into their S and P 500 their, or, or their total stock market index fund as your first investment. After you invest that three thousand, then you can invest less than that. But you need three thousand to start up, right? And some people might not necessarily have that. But the plus is the management fees are lower and it's a trustable, it's it's a it's a good index fund. You know what I'm saying? It's it's tracking S&P 500 and the total stock market, which means it's going to be very uh, safe. Yeah. Okay. You're going to get, you're, obviously the risk is going to be mitigated. Anytime the risk is mitigated, you know, the, the, um, the growth isn't going to be as high. But guys, when you do index funds, ETFs, et cetera, these are long-term buy and hold moves. Okay. You don't get into index funds and, ETS and everything like that, thinking it's like Shiba Inu, where you're gonna, I made a million dollars a year. Woo! Like, no, man, this is how the like index funds, ETS, it's boring, but it's safe. And 
pretty much, if you hold it long enough, you're going to make money. I mean, if you look at an index fund that tracks S&P 500, guys, which I'm going to talk about the S&P 500 here in a second, uh, we're talking about, you know, a 10% average return, right? Since like uh, for, for several decades. So, you know, it's, it's uh, less risk, you know, which means less reward. But when it comes to index funds and ETFs, guys, this is somewhere where you kind of don't want to fuck around. You know what I'm saying? Buy and hold long term. Because if you hold it long enough, you're going to make your money. All right. So that is with index funds. Let me make sure here I covered all my points here because I, yeah. Uh, so, okay. So the, the pluses, low risk, um, the negative, vulnerable to crashes. So anytime the stock market crashes, like right now, matter of fact, the stock market's in the fucking toilet. It's down. It's down. But, but you could look at it as an opportunity to buy. To buy it's now. a great time to buy, guys. Okay. Um, BGT. And it's uh, limited. Uh, and it's li- obviously it's limited to whatever index it follows, right? So if you're only using, let's say you're, you have an a index fund that tracks the S&P 500. Well, you're limited to only the S and P 500. You know what I'm saying? Or if you look at the total stock market, you're only limited to the total stock market. So, um, you you're gonna need to probably get more than one index fund if you really want to be diversified. You know what I mean? Um, let's see here. Uh, so next we got um, exchange traded funds, aka ETFs. ETFs. So ETFs, guys, and index funds are nearly identical. The the biggest difference between the two is that um, ETFs can be traded like stock, uh, like like stock, uh, like stocks. Okay, like you could go ahead on like a Webull or whatever. And go ahead and buy ETFs, okay? Um, but the thing is, <clears throat> ETFs are just like index funds, but uh, you don't necessarily have to put in like you know three thousand dollars, for example, to be able to get um, to to get involved with it, right? And it also has low fees. But the, the negative though with ETFs, guys, is that since it's traded like a stock, that's more prone to impulsive buying and selling because yeah. you can see it on the stock market exchange. And a lot of people, right? Like let, let's be honest, a lot of people like they don't have control. But oh, it's down. I'm selling, or you know, oh, it's going up, you know, and it's like. With these types of investments, guys, like long term, you honestly want to buy it and forget it. And that's why index funds are so good, because index funds actually allow you guys to do something called automatic reinvesting. And what automatic reinvesting, guys, is is basically you put the investing on autopilot. You can make it where uh, once a month, uh, Vanguard or whatever broker you want to use takes out whatever amount of money that you want, puts it into your account and buys the index for you at a certain whatever amount of shares you want to buy. And it pretty much puts on autopilot. And then you can start to grow your wealth. I know guys that put in like five to ten thousand dollars a month and they just buy indexes, right? They yeah. just keep buying more shares of index. You can set it for market value or a limit order value, yep. whatever works for you. Exactly. So once you make that initial investment of that three thousand or whatever it may be, depending on the broker, I'm gonna show you guys different brokers because some of them don't charge that three thousand fee, and I got y'all. Um I went and did a little bit of research. That's why we're kind of late, guys. I'm not gonna lie. We're kind of late because I was showing I was looking at other brokers to see what their fees were. So uh that hopefully this research will help you guys get started so you don't get destroyed on fees. But, <clears throat> excuse me, so you don't get destroyed on initial investment amounts. But with ETFs, you don't have to put in like uh, that amount, but you can't automatically reinvest with ETFs. So if you want to buy more shares, you have to go into your Webull account and or, or you know, or your, you know, M1 Finance, Robinhood, whatever the hell uh, uh, broker, brokerage account you want to use. And you got to go in there and continuously buy it. And then again, like I said, that's the problem. When you buy it and trade it like a stock, you're going to be more likely to result in impulse buying and impulse selling. Okay. Um, but you can buy and trade whenever the market's open. Yeah. Right. But with an index fund, you can only make one purchase a day, typically. Uh, let's see here. Make sure I got all the notes. Mutual funds, ETFs, index funds. Okay. Yeah, so we covered... Uh, okay, so let's see here. Okay, so I'll be honest with you guys. Like we discussed before, you know, mutual funds, right? Like kind of useless for most of us, right? Unless you have extreme wealth. Not really needed. But most of us are probably going to be dealing with index funds and ETFs, right? So... um. With index funds, like I said before, automatic reinvesting, which is great. And then also you can do something where you uh, have automatic reinvestment of dividends, right? So so that you have two choices, right? When you invest, you can go ahead and get a dividend payment back to you every month, which in the beginning, guys, you don't want to do that, man. Any dividend that they're going to pay you, fuck that shit. Go, put it right back in so, so you can go ahead and take advantage of something called compound interest. And compound interest works the best when you don't take dividends, reinvest it, and you're actively putting money in the, tra- in the account. OK, because yeah. if you're just going to go ahead, just and do dividends and put a little money here, whatever it may be like, yeah, you'll make you'll make some money. But it really starts to blossom when you put money in right actively putting money in and you're reinvesting dividends and it just explodes over time. If people always say, oh, do dividends. But the thing is, right, if you start with dividends from the beginning, it's a smaller pot. So you're not making that much profit when you get dividends. However, if you wait and throw money into that investment over a period of time, and like my instead compound interest, what happens is you get a big pot to pull from. And it pays more dividends as well. So I'll just wait until you pull up dividends later on. Yeah. And um, and and again, like 
it depends on what kind of person you are, right? So like, so like me, I'm a, I'm the kind of guy where I like to just um, not have to worry about anything, right? So I have, uh, and I, I have uh, I think I have yeah, VT VT Sachs, right? So which is a total stock market index for um, for Vanguard, right? And I just automatically re- reinvest in that every month with the dividends or whatever. But I also have some ETFs too. But you got to know yourself, right? Do you have if you're a, like an impulse buyer or you're one of those guys that gets emotional with your investments? You probably want to go with an index fund. You probably don't want to go with the ETF because when you go with the ETF, you're gonna to have to go into the into your brokerage account, look at the market, see the spike, see it come up and down. And if you're like, if you're one of those guys, like, oh shit, I'm just gonna buy, I'm gonna sell, whatever. It's not the way to go, bro. And this is why um, the stock market in general, right? And this is what you, this is up to you guys. I mean, again, this is not financial advice. Personally, I stay away from buying individual stocks. And the reason why I stay away from buying individual stocks is because. You have to really know what the hell you're doing when you're going to go ahead and buy individual stocks. So what's an individual stock? An individual stock, guys, is let's like say Tesla, you buy Microsoft. Exactly. You know, then, yeah. Um, Chewy. Yep. Well, Which I, I have that for for fun. I right? will say one stock you could count on is Chewy because how the marketplace is going, data marketplace, <laughs> Paul got a lot of cats and dogs. Yeah. So and the, so so the biggest so with indi- so with the individual stock, right? You're buying a share of that company. Okay. You're like that one company. So you got to know what you're doing. So if you're going to buy Apple, you're going to buy. Tesla, you're going to buy Google, right? These are some of the b- bigger companies, right? It's, it, you know, depending on how successful the company is, uh, it's going to cost more and more money to buy a share of it, right? However, let's say you buy an index fund. Well, if you buy an index fund, you're buying a fund that has a bunch of different companies in it. So let's say you get an index fund that tracks the S&P 500, right? Well, the S&P 500 is top 500 companies in the United States of America. So what you've effectively done is you, you're buying a fund that tracks the S&P 500. S&P 500 historically has given you about has given uh, returns of somewhere between eight to ten percent, right? For the past uh, couple decades, right? So if the S&P 500 fails, it, it's a wrap for all of us. Okay? America, America fails. That's a <laughs> so you're diversifying risk among the top 500 companies in the United States. So you're getting a small portion of each. So think of it, and you're getting it at a better price. So the best way I could look at this is like, let's say you got um you got like okay. Doritos, right? You got a bag of chips. So you got Doritos Cool Ranch. You got uh, nacho cheese. Uh, the reason this comes to mind is because one of the terrorists went to the fucking uh, grocery store when he was carjacking someone and bought a bunch of Doritos. Yeah, you can't make this shit up, bro. It was surveillance. Yeah, it was, uh, go, go check it out, guys. It was comical. The worst kidnappers, worst criminals ever. But anyway, you got Doritos, nacho cheese, Cool Ranch, uh, original, whatever the hell, right? You got all these flavors. Well, if you buy one bag of chips, let's say it's $3, right? Of, of a cooler ranch or nacho cheese, whatever. But let's say you get a bag of munchies, which has all those chips in it, and you get it for $3. Well, now you've effectively been able to get multiple different types of chips in one bag. That is how an index fund works, guys, okay? If I'm going to make it nice and simple. So instead of buying one bag of chips that's more expensive and you have all the risk in those chips, because who knows? They might be stale. They might be gross. Who knows? Uh, you bring it to your brother. Oh, I like this. Oh, smacks it out your hand. If you get him a bag of munchies that has all different types of chips, it's, uh, the, um, the chances will be higher that he's going to like something in there and it's going to be less likely to fail. Right. So that's an example of how to uh, do it. Okay, so let's see here. Um, uh, chats real quick? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, can we pull those up real fast? And refresh? Uh, yeah, just hit refresh. And then, uh, Fresh, can you got this one? Yeah. <clears throat> it's Monday, guys. Money Monday. Bro. Yeah, I just want to make sure, because I took a lot of notes, guys. I want to make sure I don't leave anything. I'm still recovering from uh, Sunday's fiasco. John O'Driscoll, 20 bucks, says, Gentlemen, the rich use IUL in the u- universal life, which is like insurance policy. The power of index is the power plus life insurance, plus the power of tax-free retirement. Uh, Google it. Keep the go- up the good hard work. Zero tax liability by law. Cool. Michael Mithro, 5, 2 bucks, says, Best chat mods, best podcast in the world. Shout out to you. Eric, 5 bucks, says, his knowledge is worth dollars. Uh, Desmond Montgomery, two bucks, says, how do y'all feel about Robinhood and Acorn? Um, I mean, you can use any app. Yeah, you can uh, use any one, man. Yeah, it it's just really it's basically a portal to help you buy uh, what you need to buy. Yeah. Uh, Alex MB, five bucks, Canadian, says, Berkshire Hathaway has done way better than S&P 500. If I'm not, is Berkshire Hathaway? That's a real estate. Uh, no, that's, um, I believe that's, uh, is that Warren Buffett's uh, people? I think, I think it's real estate. Hold on. Let me look yeah. at it. Oh, and then, yeah, you got, so you got also got ETFs guys that track, um, real estate as well, yeah. uh, REITs, right? So, if, so me personally, I'm a real estate investor, right? And I'll tell y'all right now, it's a pain in the ass sometimes managing these goddamn tenants. They don't pay rent. They'd be on some bullshit. It happens, right? So you could go ahead and buy, uh, um, an ETF 
that tracks real estate, right? So you don't necessarily have to deal with tenants. So we talked about this in detail with Adam. Now, me personally, I don't have any REITs, right? I just buy real estate myself. But that's another option that you could take. And then the good thing about REITs is they typically pay higher dividends than other um, ETFs, right? Which, you know, if you want to live off of dividends, right, that's okay. You know, it's up to you. But personally, in, when you're building your wealth, guys, you want to go ahead and reinvest those dividends every single time. You invest the money in there so that you can take advantage of compound interest over time, okay? And you're taking your earned income, throwing in there, and letting it explode for you, all right? Um, and then any other chats, Chris? Uh, my hair. We got Ali the Prince, 20 bucks, says, okay. shout out to FNF gang. First super chat, I just want to say, it's stacking my money, got a bunch of girls in rotation, and been receiving blessings on blessings. Thank you so much, and I'm manifesting the day I get to meet y'all. Shout out to you, bro. Cool. And then Ray Santos Crypto, five bucks, says, love your work. I also teach newbies on Twitter about crypto. Stay ruthless, bro. Love dividend funds, like ORC. There you go. All right, quick. Oh, okay. I'm right, sorry. I mean, uh, awesome. So, anything else, Chris? I knew no, members. Oh, uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Welcome, bro. Welcome to the fam. I feel like we've seen him before. Yeah, yeah. He's been uh, super chatted in the chat recently. Shout okay. To, shout out to you, bro. And then last one. And the last one here, Chavez, uh, 510. 510. 510. What category does 401k investments fall under? Uh, we're not going to be talking about those here, Retire guys. That's a whole, that's its own other thing. Retirement. Uh, but you yeah, could use not, these yeah. index funds as a retirement as well. Some people do that. Yeah. Um, but okay, so let's do a quick little recap because then now I'm going to get into how to um, go ahead and get your account set up step by step, right? But let's before we get into you know how to set up your account, which what to buy, etc. Let's go over what the hell index ETFs and mutual funds actually are. So number one, mutual fund, oldest of the three. Okay, actively managed account by a professional. Okay, and it has higher fees. You got to pay somewhere between half a percent all the way up to two and a half percent to have them actively manage your account for you. Okay, and they take that annual fee that I just told you guys about. Um, obviously, it's nice and convenient because they manage it for you. You get to own a bunch of different stocks and a nice little portfolio uh, that's managed by them. Uh, you're diversified automatically because it's mutual, aka more funds. And uh, or sorry, more risk is diversified. And uh, you got the professional management, which, like I said before, is a gift and a curse. Okay, because if you're up, they're going to take their fee. If you're down, they're going to take your fee. And for most of you guys, let's be honest, mutual funds is not going to be really worth it for you because mutual funds that are actually the really, really good, you need a lot of capital to get in. You got to be like a billionaire and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be all the way 1,000 with you. So most people are going to benefit immensely from having index funds and ETFs. So let's go over to index, what are index funds. Basically, the track indexes of different types of <clears throat> indexes, sectors, et cetera. Um, and it could be the S&P 500. It could be the total stock market. It could be REITs. It could be anything. There's different. There's a million different types of index funds, guys. But think of it as they're investing based on the algorithm. Okay, it's not being actively managed; it's being passively managed, which means they don't they don't necessarily charge you fees, right? At the same level uh, as someone that's actively managing a human being, a computer is doing it for you. Okay, so that makes it easier, and on top of that, less risk because since it's um, being done by an index. It's off of algorithm, and the, and the computer is fairly accurate a lot of the time, right? And this is why so many index funds that track, like the S&P 500 or the total stock market, whatever, they're very um, profitable, right? Now, are they as profitable as like buying individual stock and taking more risk? No, but you're not going to lose as much money because you're diversified among different types of uh, um, businesses, okay? Uh, let's see here. And you have lower fees as well. Um, the negative is you're vulnerable to crashes, but that's, a, that's the entire stock market at that point. And then we also got, um, and you're limited to whatever your index follows, right? Which is why you kind of want to be, it's good to have like us S&P 500. When we're going to talk about like different options you could take, but this is why it's good to have different types of index funds. Maybe that one that follows the S&P 500, another one that follows the international, another one that follows the total stock market, you know, one that maybe follows real estate, depending on, you know, how, how diversified you want to be. But um, that's the beauty of index funds, right? Um, now we're uh, exchange traded e uh, funds, AKA ETFs, okay? Think of this, guys, as index funds, but in a more stock type uh, format. Okay, you can buy and trade it like a stock. You can go on a regular, like a you know, a Robinhood or whatever, and buy ETFs, right? And a lot of these index funds also have a ETF version of them. So, for example, like uh, Vanguard has a S and P five hundred <coughs> index fund, but they also have a, a index five hundred ETF, right? And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a v it's a VOO, v -O -O v -O -O. for the ETF. But they also have a mere a mere component that tracks the S&P 500, which is, I think, VFIAX, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, VFIAX, yeah. Yeah, that's the S&P 500 version. I'm going to show you guys this all here in a second, right? So it's up to you what you want to do, whether you want to do it with an index fund or an ETF. It's, it tracks the same exact S&P 500. Here's the difference, though. 
with the index fund, you can automatically reinvest, right, every month. No autopilot, right? It automatically takes money from your account, buys whatever amount that you want to buy, um, and then it, it just and it re- automatically reinvests the dividends for you. So it just lets you kind of like not have to look at it. You're going to be less likely to do stupid things off of your emotions when you see your account going down or up, okay? Like right now, uh, probably not a good time to look at your account, right? <laughs> um, but uh, the negative is, like for Vanguard, for example, you're going to have, sometimes you're going to need like an initial deposit amount, right? Which for Vanguard, I know is $3,000. Okay. And then from there, after that, then you can reinvest as little or as much as you want on a monthly basis. With the ETF, you don't necessarily have a minimum, but the problem is that every time you want to buy another share, you have to go back into your broker, Jeff, and buy it manually. And let's be honest here, human beings have emotions. You might see your shit down, up, it's going to be, it's going to make you more likely to, uh, uh, emotionally buy and or sell, which you don't want to do that. You want to be emotionless when you when it comes to this type of thing. So anything that gets uh, removes emotion will make it uh, better for you, right? Yeah, honestly, if you can set it or forget it, the automation exactly. is going to be best for you. Because think about it, right? If you're going to go ahead and invest in your future, you don't want to be sitting there checking every single day, every single month, set it, forget it, and have money in the account. So when it comes up that time of month, you know, it's handled. You don't have to worry about it. And before you know it, five, maybe three years in the future, look at your account. It's there, so... All right. So now that we went over there, real, um, now we're going to get into the second part here. So we talked about what mutual funds are, index funds, and ETFs, broken down, plus the negatives each. Now we're going to talk about how to actually get set up here. Round two, fight. So step one, you're going to open a brokerage account, guys, okay? Whether it's, uh, and there's a bunch of them out there. There's Vanguard, yeah. there's Charles Schwab, there's Fidelity, Fidelity there's Merrill Lynch. Merrill Lynch. There's a million of them, all right? Um, so you're going to pick one, and you're going to go ahead and open an account. And I'm yeah. going to actually show you guys some of them. Right now, here in a second, after uh, we figure this out, yeah, we, oh, after use, I do we use Vanguard, but you can use whatever one works yes. for you. Um, so yeah, and then and to be honest with you guys, it might, I, I think there's some better ones than Vanguard. Me and Fresh might have just, <laughs> fucked up here, but um, and that's the uh, part two is you want to um, you got to figure out what you want to invest in, okay, guys? Um, whether you want to go into the stock market, which like I told you guys before, I think you should start with index and ETFs first because when you buy individual stocks, you need to know what the hell you're doing, okay, and you got to time the market and do all this other fuck shit. That, quite frankly, you probably shouldn't be doing unless you know what the hell you're doing, all right? And um, you, you want to be able to invest long-term, guys. Put your money there. Forget about it. Look at it maybe once a year, once every six months, and then just watch it grow, okay? And keep and keep taking your active income, right? Your, your The income that you make from your active income from working, in, uh, invest a portion of it in there and just, you know, use the power of compound interest, uh, reinvesting dividends, and, um, and time. I think once you're okay with losing the money, you'll be in a better state of mind because yeah. if you got money that you actually need and you put it in the stock market, yeah, don't do that. It can go left left really, really quickly. So have money that you don't need per se, put it and save it up into these uh, investments. That way, if you lose some, you're not worried too much. You let it sit there and buy and hold. Yeah, don't buy individual stocks, guys, unless you know what you're doing, honestly. I mean, right. I bought some Chewy because, you know, we, we talk to girls every day and I, I foresee that pet food is going to be go up. But uh, <laughs> but um, but real talk, you shouldn't be buying individual stocks. Start with indexes and ETFs, nice and low risk, right? So, um, so step one, open that brokerage account. Step two, figure out what you want to invest in. Like I said before, ETFs and index funds, fantastic. All right. Now from there, you got to figure out, all right, am I going to go the ETF round, uh, route or am I going to go the index route? Personally, if you got that $3,000 guys, right. And you want to get into Vanguard or something like that, go with the index fund. Cause you, it's literally set it and forget it. It's stupid proof. And you're going to, you're not going to have to go back in there and buy ET, uh, keep buying ETFs. Okay. Now I have both personally. But uh, but if you're going to have to pick one, I will say go with the index if you have the capital to do it. If you don't have the capital to do it, it's fine. You can go with the ETF. But I'm going to show you guys some cool shit right now where you'll still be able to buy index funds with different brokerages, even though you might not have that $3,000. And I actually uh, went ahead and took the, the um, I got S&P 500, a total stock market and an international market um, uh, index funds for you guys from different brokerages. So let's pull up the first one Sheesh. real quick. Yeah, man. I, I, that's why we're late, guys, because I want to pull these up for you guys so you can that's compare some good contrast. Stuff right there, man. So I'm I, I'm doing the work for you guys that I should have done for myself. God damn it. <laughs> so okay. So the first one we're gonna go over, guys, is the Vanguard Total Stock Market uh, um, Index shares. Fund, right? VTSAX. Okay. And the easiest way to tell guys if something if something's an ETF versus an index fund is when it's an index fund, it's uh five characters. When it's an ETF, it's three characters to be traded just like a stock. All right. So. The big thing I want you guys to look at here is see where it says minimum event investment there, three thousand dollars. Chris, you see that? Mm, down, down, down. Fun fact. Right there, where it says minimum investment. Fun number. 
Fun facts. Yeah, three thousand dollars, right? You need three thousand dollars to get in. The expense ratio is 0.04, right? And that's on a annual basis, if I'm not mistaken. And then, um, and then this is what this is what the account is, right? This is for Vanguard. Now, Chris, can you go over to the next one, which I think is Charles Schwab? Now, this is Charles Schwab, right? And this is also a total stock market uh, index fund, SWTSX. And if you guys look, minimum investment down at the bottom. <laughs> One dollar, so you don't need you 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 can invest with literally a hundred bucks in here yep. with Charles Schwab, right? And the reason why is because let's be honest, uh, Vanguard guys are the pioneers of the index fund. So these other companies, these other brokerage account uh, companies, are trying to compete. compete. So yeah. they're basically yeah. trying to get business by saying, "Hey, listen, bro, you guys can come in and invest with little as a dollar down, okay?" And then, um, and it also tracks the total stock market. And then we got uh, Fidelity up next where it has a minimum investment of zero dollars guys which is fucking crazy sheesh okay um and yeah this also stock scroll up a little bit chris fidelity zero total stock market index fund and i think what's the what's the uh it's v z r o x is the code okay guys so right now and this is right now like literally live on the internet right now as we speak because i i didn't like take a screenshot or anything like that this is what it is as we speak as the day of this broadcast which is uh march 14th 2022, 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. So that's the total stock market index. Now we're going to go into the SP 500 index funds, which uh, it should be a, a Vanguard one, Chris. Yep. So here we go Vanguard 500 index fund, VFIAX. Okay. Why do they call it Admiral Shares? That's just like what they call it. I never understood that. Yeah, I thought it was weird too. They, they, uh, Vanguard has like weird terms, bro. I ain't going to lie. Like they call your, um, your, your your account that you like put the money into like something like an American account or some shit like that. Yeah, that's an old ass thing. But it's, but it gets tracked though. That's why because the U they call it that because the government tracks it and then it goes then you, it goes into the market. It's got to I called the guy and they they were explaining all this to me. Okay. Um. But anyway, again, see guys, it says category large blend because you have a bunch of different companies in there, so you're owning just like I told you guys before. You got munchies versus having one bag of Dorito chips, right? Again, three K minimum. Three K minimum expense ratio 0.04 percent. Okay. So. Uh, which if I think if you have, let's say you have ten thousand dollars in there, right? Let me do the math here real quick. So if you have ten thousand, ten thousand in there, right, and then time point zero four. Oh no, it's less than that. It's zero point zero four. Yeah, it's okay. So ten. Sorry guys, my math is terrible. Someone failed algebra one and algebra two. <laughs> time. How'd you make it this far? <clears throat> hmm. No, that's off. Okay. Well, we'll just keep going on, but that's not much money, guys. Uh, point zero zero point zero four, zero point zero four. So that's um the Vanguard index fund, okay? And then we're gonna show you guys now the Charles Schwab one. Scroll down. Um, oh, yeah. So here's their S and P five hundred index fund, and that one has one dollar fee to get in. All right, SWPPX. And then we're gonna show you guys the Fidelity one. And again, guys, we're not sponsored by any of these guys. We're just simply showing you guys so you can compare and contrast. F, what was it? Go up, Chris. Yeah, FXAIX, Fidelity 500 Index Fund. And this one also has a uh, minimum to invest of $0. zero. So as you guys can see, with Charles Schwab and Fidelity, you can get in with like nothing, bro. Um, Pretty much. To get in there. Now I'm going to show you guys the um, total. Uh, the I think the next one is going to be, I think, is it international stock market? Click uh click the next Vanguard one, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund, VTIAX. Um, this one needs uh three thousand dollars to invest, and then the expense ratio on this one is fairly high, uh point one one percent. All right. Um, and see how it says available as an ETF starting at the price of one share. So all of these index funds that I'm showing you guys has a uh an ETF. ETF component to it. Yeah. Equivalent. All right. Um, and then go. But like I said before. If you do an index fund, you can automatically reinvest every month versus with the ETF, you have to go back in there and manually buy every you know, month or whatever, whenever you want to invest, okay? Um, which can get annoying sometimes. Or you might forget. Or you might forget, or, or you might see the market. You'd be like, oh, I don't want to buy this shit, man. The market's too high. Like, you know, it's, it's, you're going gonna, gonna, to gonna be more prone to um, be emotional. The less steps you have to take to get into it and actually maintain it, yeah. and the more emotion, sorry, less emotion you can put into it, the better. So Exactly. Um, so next we're going to go with the Charles Schwab one. Charles Schwab. So. And this one, Schwab International Index Fund, SWISX. And to get it for this one, also a dollar. All right. 
And then, and guys, you're going to see red everywhere because the, the market right now is tanking. And then now we're going to go into Fidelity. This might be the time to buy. Yeah. Because it's low. Uh, and then here's a Fidelity one, International Index Fund, and that one is F-Z-I-L-X. And that one also has a minimum to invest of zero dollars. And and Charles Schwab and Fidelity are kind of the new guys on the block, which is why they're having these um these uh, enticing uh, offers interest uh, you know minimum to invest, which is like almost no money no money because Vanguard is a big dog. So everyone knows what Vanguard uh, you have to uh, put in at least three thousand dollars to get into in the index funds. Now you might be asking yourself, Myron, I don't got three thousand fucking dollars to invest, and I don't feel like doing index funds because that's I don't know lame. I want to do ETFs, bro. Sounds cooler. All right, cool. If you want to do some ETFs, um, you can definitely invest in ETFs as well. ETFs trade like stocks. And in that case, you can go ahead and get on like a Robinhood, a Webull, et cetera. I use personally Webull. Again, we're not sponsored by any of these niggas. We're just telling you guys what we do. And um, with um, ETFs, right, you can go ahead and get the equivalent. So in this case, right, the S&P 500 for uh, equivalent for, uh, for Vanguard is VOO. The total stock market equivalent is VTI. Right. And then also I have me personally, VGT, which is information tech. technology. For That's tech. a tech stock. Yeah. Right. And then another popular one is QQQ. Right. Uh, which is the NASDAQ 100 index. Um, and there's a bunch of different uh, good index funds, guys. But those are some very, very popular ones right there. Um, did did but, you get a, a sweep out for your um, money market fund? A sweep out? Yeah. What's, uh, let me see here. I, I gotta like look at it. Yeah. I, I gotta look at it. Okay. But um, but yeah, guys. So, <clears throat> so with ETFs, everything that we just showed you guys with index funds, there is typically gonna be an ETF mirror equivalent of it. Okay. And like I said before, index funds and ETFs are almost identical. The main differences are this: ETFs you buy and trade it like a stock. Index funds you can buy it and pretty much do it like once a day. Um, index funds allow you to automatically re reinvest every month. You know whatever amount you want. ETFs you gotta go in there and manually buy it. So those are really the main differences. If you want to set it and forget it, go with index funds. If you want to go ahead and you know go in there and buy it yourself and buy different portions or whatever it may be, you can go ahead and go with the ETFs. Um, but if you want to, if you buy regular index funds, guys, that's going to be like the easiest by far. It's 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 probably going to be the easiest way for you to build wealth. Real talk, because you're going to take advantage of compound interest, compound interest. time, invest, reinvesting dividends, and automatic investing every month. Uh, and it takes it right from your bank account, whatever account you want to use, your funding source, and then it just puts it right into the account, and then bam, you go ahead and you invest. And honestly, guys, and this is, again, not financial advice, but this is what I personally think. If you're going to invest, right, index ETFs, easiest thing you could do, by far, by far. You can do it all on your phone, okay, with apps, okay? So, and uh, you can you can do it pretty easily with, you just hook up an account and you're good. Versus like real estate that's time consuming and it's going to actually, you know, take you to, you're going to have to like work on your property, get a manager, deal with tenants, you know what I'm saying? All that other shit. So that's one thing that sucks. But, you know, obviously real estate is you know, probably one of the best, uh, <laughs> one of the best creators of wealth. There's a lot of tax advantages too. And a lot of tax advantages. But it is definitely a lot of work you got to put into it. Yeah. So overall, we're just saying here in a nutshell, if you can have a diverse portfolio, real estate, stocks, crypto, shoot. Uh, ETS, mutual funds. And if you can, uh, gold and silver. Yeah. 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 So guys, me personally, my, my, my general portfolio is I'm, I'm heaviest in real estate, right? But I also have uh, index funds, ETFs, cryptocurrency, and I got silver. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I have, I have cash as well, but right for a rainy day, but you want to be diversified among different types of um, investment classes, guys, so that rain, hail or shine, you'll be okay. If the housing market crashes, you'll still have stocks. If the stock market crashes, you'll still have uh, uh, um, precious metals, okay? Precious metals uh, goes down. Well, I guess it's a zombie apocalypse and we're all going to die. But um, I, I, I will say this, though. If you got a bad debt, investing in this, all these uh, asset classes here don't make any sense because if you got bad debt, but you owe people, you're paying every month, it's all going to be higher than these investments. So make sure you're debt-free on at least a bad debt. Uh, good debt's like, uh, you know. Um, yeah, if you have a mortgage, mortgage whatever. If, so, if, if if you have a yeah. mortgage on like a cash flowing house, that's fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, it's it's making you money. Your tenant is paying down the mortgage for you. Yeah. And you're also gaining, you're, so you're gaining equity that you don't, you're not necessarily paying. But tenant's paying it down. And on top of that, the house is appreciating over time, which is why real estate is so good. But the negative with real estate is you need a decent amount of capital to get into some degree. Yeah. And on top of that, you also need to um manage the property. 
Because after you have like two or three guys, I'm telling you, you're gonna probably need to get a manager. But this like a high, high personal credit card, um, debt or like personal loans, get rid of that, man. ASAP. Yeah, yeah. And the other good thing about um, you know, getting into index funds and ETFs is your credit doesn't really come into play. Bam. You know what I'm saying? You you can go ahead and just start get like just like with cryptocurrency. Th think of think of and this is a terrible comparison, like as far as like trying to compare the two because they're completely two different asset classes. But um, the same simplicity of buying cryptocurrency. You also have what buying ETFs and index funds. There's you know, like no barrier to entry. There's no that. barrier to entry. Have you can money. do it right on your phone, and you can uh, and you can invest as much or as little as you want. And on top of that, um, it's not really you don't need a credit check. Yep. Like if you want to, you know, go ahead and get into real estate, you need you need to have good credit to get into real estate. Yep. So, um, yeah, guys. So this is the, the this is probably the easiest way to build wealth that is safe, sustainable, and long term, man. Okay, because index funds and ETFs. You can't really go wrong. You know, there's a reason why uh, a lot of wealthy guys have quite a bit of their wealth in the stock market and index and ETFs. And when people say, oh, I got money in the stock market, 99% of the time, what they mean is index fund and ETFs. ETFs yep. That's what they really mean. Yeah. They're like, no one really gets rich off of just uh, investing uh, off of individual stocks, bro. It's way too risky. It's way too volatile. So the guys that make the most money, index funds, ETFs, man. All right. Uh, At least consistently. Ray Santos Crypto, five bucks. Love your work. I also teach newbies on Twitter about crypto. Say ruthless, bro. Yeah. I love dividend t funds like ORC. All right. And um, and guys, there's a bunch of good ET ETFs out there. I just named a few, right? But to keep it keep it nice and simple, anything that tracks the S&P 500, anything that tracks the total stock market, anything that tracks international stock market. Yeah. Um, tech. Tech. Tech is good, right? So like, for example, I, I got VGT, right? Me personally, I have I, the ETFs I have are VGT and VOO. And yeah. then the index Ooh, funds. VGT. Yeah. V yep. And then, uh, and then the, Index fund that I got is a total stock market index. Those are the three things I invest in. All right. So yeah, I'm, a, you I'm shouldn't, a, you shouldn't get in the sauce, bro. No, no, no. We'll, we'll be invested. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. Those are safe. Those are safe investments, guys. So yeah. don't. So S and P 500, total stock market, international market. Those are going to be pretty good. And tech as well. You can't go wrong with those four. See, mine's a, mine's a very good guy. I want to send nothing, but you said it for y'all. That's there fine. Yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> VO. I'll say it one more time for y'all. I have VOO, VGT. And um, VF uh, VT Sachs, which is the total stock market index. I think yes, yeah, VT Sachs, right? Yeah. Um, okay, cool. five bucks. Chavez five ten. What category does 401, uh, 401 k investment fall under? My friend, it's retirement. We'll do an episode on four. Actually, no, no. Watch the episode we did with Aaron Cleary. Aaron Cleary. He, yeah. he broke down a four hundred one k's, guys. We could bring in like a, a retirement expert as well. Yeah, that covers that mainly. But yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Communal kill twelve bucks. Shout 12. out to Big Mo and Chris in the back. Discord gang. There you go. Okay, we got M two bucks. Uh, live not cute. You should have helped out fresh. You should have helped out. Fresh. Oh, that, that's your opinion, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's your opinion. KVBVL. Just want to shout out Fresh's evolution and articulate himself. My man is completely Frank Castled with that being said out of his vocab. Hey, that's good. Hey, I haven't said that in a while. Uh, five bucks. That being said. That being said. <laughs> uh, it's King Shaft. I love you guys. Uh, pause. pause. One, two, three. You got it. Five bucks. Been a member for nine months. Got new debit card, so missed my renewal. Bought two shares of Black Rock at 700 each. BLK today shout out to you bro maximum dooch 20 bucks says what do you suggest if we're not into position to invest thousands at the moment just focus on making more money yes 100 yes yes guys remember you only invest you gotta you gotta um a lot of time when you can't invest nine out of ten times is one of two things either you have too much debt or you don't make enough earned income yeah you got to take your earned income put it into assets that pay you back dividends so that you get passive income all right so just like a step rule here if you can and it's not perfectly all the time, but if you can't follow this, is excellent. You pay off your debt, right? You're you're debt free, and then two, you have money coming in, and a lot of money as well. So when you uh, make money, you put some aside for investments, and it doesn't hurt you uh, in that sense. So that's that's what I would say. The goal, guys, is to try to invest fifty percent of your earned income if you can. Yeah, that's 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 what Brandon does. Brandon I agree Carter, with that. Holy I, smokes, that you know? that changed my whole my whole like uh, yeah. outlook, man. I invest so. a little bit more than that, but like it depends on how how um minimal you're you're willing to go. You know, I mean, honestly, bro, I haven't bought new clothes in fucking years, you know? Yeah, we can tell. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, 20 bucks, 34, you know, thoughts on Acorns? Well, besides our merch, of course. Yeah. Um, it's, it's another app. Okay. Uh, 27, 5 for 7, no kids, 20K debt, monthly bills, 2K, income, 4K, plus side money. Should I take a payout for doing an electrician apprenticeship, plan on making six figs, or should I get my shit together first? Uh, oh, a pay cut pay for cut. doing an electrician apprenticeship. I mean, you're gonna make more money in, in the long run if you. If it's gonna make you, yeah. that path, so uh, you could take a pay cut if you're not gonna to be too. I mean, you got 20k debt though. 
But you could pay it off faster if you finish the whole process. Yeah, we don't know kind of what kind of debt, though. Remember, yeah. if it's a house debt, that's one thing. But if it's, like, consumer debt, like, credit cards and shit, like, nah, bro. Because that's, that's, like that's, that's high interest. percent 17%. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah. credit card debt is, is the worst kind of debt you don't want to have, and bro. And you, bro, I'll hustle to pay out the 20 k debt if possible, depending on what it is, and then uh, go ahead. But We're going to do another episode on our credit for you guys probably next week. Um, yeah, man. Credit card debt is always what you want to get hey, rid man, of first, bro. Studio. The Lambo, yeah, all that stuff is, is with credit, man. You, you, Properties. you it, like th- this. This is how you guys finesse credit. You buy on credit, right? We're using a, a card that gives you some kind of benefit to use the card, and then you pay the shit off in full every month. You don't give these fucking assholes any interest. Yep. Okay, they hate people like that. But guess what? Keeps your credit score high. You get the benefits, travel, get points for free, and and you get thirty days to pay shit. So it's like, and it builds your credit in the process, man. So, so Raphael, yeah, uh, Casalas, uh, yeah. Thank you, Fresh, for recommending books on the low. Set uh, for Life is a must. I'm currently reading Liz Weston's book on credit. Any more authors or uh, books to check out? Thank you, guys, for this content. Bachelor uh, Pad Economics. Book yeah, of Numbers. Yeah. Aaron Clary. Yeah. But those, those two books will, will set you up with the, regarding credit score and also what invest in when, when you get the money. Rich Dad Poor Dad as well is pretty good. Yep. All right. Um, Myron Fresh, if you want to leave Vanguard for another brokerage, look into an account rollover, law permits, one rollover a year. That's true. Okay. Young men are stupid to not be watching you guys. I wish I had stuff like this to watch and learn from when I was in my 20s. Yeah, man. And corporate angels, like, you could go do your, go do your research. Don't just take it from us only. Go look on there. There's other videos on YouTube you could find. And just add to it what you know already. And yeah. then go ahead and make a step and invest. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. And hell, I mean, uh, guys, you, I, I did a lot of the work for you guys. Like, I put the, the top three, you know, brokerages. And you can just kind of compare those three and decide who you want to go with. Um, dollar cost crypto, 100 bucks. Much love, uh, you guys. Listen to these men. Thank you so much. Bro. Love you, bro. The crypto millionaire in here making us look like peasants with our crypto portfolios. Double kick, 10 bucks. <laughs> First time tuning in live. You guys are literally a one stop shop teaching me everything. We need to navigate life for free. I'm, addi- I'm addicted to the podcast. Shout out to you, bro. Thank you. Michael Mistroke. Thank you, Myron. Got right. you guys. Wizard uh, X. Yeah, guys, like definitely look into Schwab and Fidelity. You know, the, the fact that you don't need any money to get in is fucking or $0, crazy. Which isn't bad at all. It kind of makes me think like, what was I doing? But nah, it is what it is, man. is good. Yeah, well, Vanguard is good too. Yeah. Uh, Wizard X, will you be, uh, will you bring Nomad Investor for Money Mondays? I don't know who that is, but we can look it up. Richard Ricardo Tejeda. This is not financial advice, and we are not financial advisors for who may be watching. This is true. It is that not. Is very this true. Is just, we're just two niggas on a podcast that are hey, telling man, you this, what we did. This is what we do. If you want to follow us, <laughs> you can, but you don't have to. It's exactly. Just what we do. Do your own research, but you know, like I said, we put everything up for you guys so you can make your own decisions. Uh, whether you go Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Vanguard, Merrill Lynch, they're all good brokerages. Uh, <laughs> it's King Shaft. It's King Shaft. I love you guys as the homies. Thank you. Thanks for uh, sh- Shitty Greg, love this video. I'm a minimalist, and girls always ask, "Hey, you're in cyber. Why do you drive a Honda?" I'm investing about 60 to 70% of my income. Good stuff, my yeah. friend. Max Sauce, content, FNF gang, fire content, FNF gang. Appreciate y'all saving lives. Merge gang, BBC gang, we up. Thank you. Uh, Dark, Dark, Dark she? she? I've heard some folks lately talk about 401s being trash. I work in bit uh, in a bit tech, and I get 50% matched up to the limit, aka 10K a year. Free money, guys. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Especially if your employer matches. That's a good match. And then we got M. Two bucks. What percentage of check should go to asset savings and life? This depends on how much money you earn. Oh, yeah. It depends Guys, on where you. are you ending the show? Stop saying super chats, please. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Can you ask five bucks? Have any of you guys invented, invested, I think he means, in VGX, Voyager Token? I haven't personally. Have you? No, I, I have. I've never um, invested in them, man. Then last one here, DL saying 100 bucks. Uh, DL saying, I have a dancer friend, stripper, asked me why doesn't my credit score go up? She said she pays on it. I sent her y'all credit card episodes, change your life. Keep leading from the front, gentlemen. Awesome, man. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah, that's great, bro. That's, that's awesome. Dumb, dumb, this dumb, advice dumb, uh, is not, you know, only for men. It's for women, too, if they want to listen. It's just that they tend to look at those Twitter clips and get mad. So anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, guys. But guys, we got some lovely ladies in the house right now, uh, which is why we wanted to make sure that we, you know, made this one short and sweet. Timestamps will be up in a second. Guys, don't forget to like the, like video. the video, subscribe to the channel, because these Money Mondays are where the money is made, man. We'll catch life. you guys in a little bit. Peace. Peace.